Hey guys, today we are reacting to Monica Keoch's 10 Sexiest Men's Fragrances for 2024. It's been a while since we reacted to Monica. It's nice to see what she's up to these days, what her taste and style is like nowadays. And of course, us guys love to see what an attractive woman thinks uh, are the most sexy fragrances. But what does Omar think are the most sexy fragrances? I'm going to react to her <laughs> reactions to these fragrances and see if I agree or disagree. So let's begin the reaction video. It just smells me. This is so good. Welcome, welcome back to this Men's Cologne's channel from a woman's perspective. In today's video, I'll be sharing with you top 10 sexiest colognes for men of 2024. Does anyone else think that Monica's background has improved? I think her production value has probably gone up since the last time I reacted to her. I've picked five niche fragrances and five designer to make it equal and I've got two honorable mentions as well and I'm going to share with you why they're not on the list fully. I'm glad she did a mixture of both designer and niche. That's quite cool because that keeps both uh, sides of the crowd happy. I think it's a good choice. So the first honorable mention is Oudwood from Tom Ford. I thought because I talk about it so much, if you've seen any of my recent videos, you know I absolutely adore this scent. I talk about it all the time, so you probably all know I adore this. This is on the list. Like, if, even if it's not on the list, it's still on the list. It's an amazing, amazing sexy scent. Yeah, that's a good point. As a reviewer, uh, I've learned from recent experience, you do have your favorites that last the test of time, but People like to see new fragrances, so yeah, I can understand Monica not including Oudwood in the main list. I do think this is an incredibly sexy fragrance. It still stands the test of time. This is uh, another one that didn't make it on the list. It's Gris Chanel Extra. I love it on oh, my husband. It's one of those fragrances that is just so intoxicating and very, very strong, but it's a newer favorite, so that's why it's not on the official list, but I still love it. And I just recently um, just discovered that it smells so amazing on men. Yeah, I think this is a great fragrance. The Gris Chanel line in general, both the Eau de Parfum and the Parfum smell fantastic. Unisex, fig, sandalwood, cardamom, perfumery, really sexy stuff. Definitely check it out, guys. If you like Weiss's Lenuit de Lomme, I'm not saying they're clones, but if you like that fragrance, you're probably gonna love Rich Chanel as well. So number 10, so my least favorite, I'm going to go to my top, top favorite. This is Azaro, the most wanted. It's still on this list because it's an amazing scent. It's so fun. And this scent, it is just rich. It's got some of this like pineapple, apple gingery warm apple crumble top accord but then it goes into this really manly woody smokiness man it's so good it's fresh but it's really deep at the same time this to me is gourmand but still like if you took bleu de chanel and you made it more fun and uh, you added some of those like apple crisp notes it's just a fun really sexy really solid performance of a cologne as well you can't detest it this is an amazing fragrance and really affordable at discounters as well i'm not getting those notes i don't think i agree with it but i do think it is a fun casual scent that smells like loud woody toffee with a fresh greenness aromatic uh, top note initially but that's kind of it i think it's a very simple fragrance but it's an incredibly good uh, clubbing scent i will say i still recommend it 32% of people who watch School of Scent are subscribed to us. If you guys want to see our channel grow to really help us out, click subscribe. Let's get that number to 40%. Thank you. Next, number nine is one niche fragrance that has been on many lists because this is the sexy, but like raw, sensual, very confident, assertive sort of a fragrance. And it is side effect from Initio. And then believe me when I tell you this, ah, when I smell it, man, it's so raw, it's so leathery, it's so manly. Like to me, I just, it's one of those fragrances that is total like bad boy energy, sensual, love it. Especially that leatheriness, that cinnamon and those red fruits in here. They make this fragrance captivating and again, an amazing performance in this fragrance. Longevity and projection is really good. So you won't be disappointed. I think this is a really good fragrance. Yeah, I'm not sure if I would say it's bad, but I say it's a really elegant perfumery, spicy, boozy, ambery, quite simplistic. I think the initial fragrance is a 
lot of people don't mention how high quality but simplistic they are. And I think Side Effect was one of the better fragrances I tried for them from their sample kit, but for me, it wasn't a perfect fit, but I do think a lot, a lot of guys, I think most guys will really appreciate this. Although I think this is probably still unisex overall. Next up, we've got another designer fragrance. I thought I would do niche designer, niche designer. And this is Dior Sauvage Elixir. This scent, man, just smelling it out of the bottle. I don't even have to spray it because it's so strong and it's one of those scents to me it's got this like gentlemanly a little bit of that vintage 90s cologne vibe but made modern as well so it doesn't feel outdated it's very masculine almost like it just smells like muscly men but made more classic i will say it smells spicy intense it does have that slight lavender fruiture aspect she's talking about yes but just very middle eastern and masculine a very intense loud scent i think it works on some guys better than others i smell it actually quite often elixir nowadays and i think depending on the guy how they rock themselves how they present themselves it can work for some personalities really well i say go two sprays use this in the cold weather only please i know some guys who go probably quite heavy on the trigger in the hot weather i don't recommend that for a sauvage elixir next up we've got a newer niche fragrance the new absolute creed aventus i adore this scent it's so good. The dry down is just killer for me. The dry down is better than the original Creed Aventus for me. They made the Creed Aventus have a bit more character, a bit more of that gentlemanliness. They kind of mixed a bit of green Irish tweed in this, I feel like. That sort of a grassy, really nice smokiness. I think Aventus Absolute is a fantastic release. I do think they kind of made the uh, original Aventus is basically more rich a little bit taken back to its original glory days i'd say if you like and miss the older batches of aventus aventus absolutely might do it for you if you're willing to spend that kind of money i think this is a fantastic signature i think it has more of a juicy pineapple aspect to it i think it has more of a juicy blackcurrant aspect to it as well it's kind of like a more fruity batch of events i don't think it's incredibly smoky i just think it's incredibly smooth and done better it's smoothed out the dna and it's giving you better performance as well. New fragrance, uh, it's one that really truly surprised me and it is amazing. And this is for somebody, if you want a cheapie, if you want a blind buy, if you want like a solid fragrance, you 100% will like. This is one of them, it's an amazing scent. I blind bought it myself and I'm very happy. Missoni Prom or the Parfum, I believe. That's what they put, like they just, the name isn't like a specific name, it's just Missoni Prom. This scent not only has got a magnetic bottle cap for the price, that is not something that you get usually, but the scent, it's so good. It's a more citrusy, more tropical citrusy version of Bleu de Chanel for me, but it's got a very sophisticated, nice blue cologne, cologne vibe. And the price, I'm telling you, it's an amazing, amazing, affordable, cheapy man. I wouldn't call it even cheap because that's like offending this fragrance. Yeah, a lot of people say that Missoni Pour Homme Parfum is a kind of clone of Blue Chanel, not an exact replica, but it's kind of like an affordable alternative. I tried Missoni Wave, which is definitely trying to clone Versace Pour Homme. I wasn't a huge fan of that, but now with how Chanel keeps hiking up their prices, actually it's, uh, affordable alternatives to Blue Chanel might be a good option nowadays for a lot of people. So it might be worth checking this out. I think it's got some good reviews in general. Also there is Club de Nuit Iconic for those of you who want a more affordable clone to Blue Chanel. We've got a niche scent again, and this is one that is always on my top fragrance list because I just love something about it. This is Kaltan from Parfum de Mali. Man, I love this fragrance and it's one that I loved at first sniff. It's so impressive when you smell it, so good. It's really dry, agarwood, spices. They say it's like a praline sort of an accord and I get what they mean. It's like a syrupy, nice, sweet scent as well. But you, you've got this, woodiness that just just goes throughout the fragrance and makes it project crazily it's really nice yeah i was described haltain as the more easy to approach version of oud for greatness by initio they're actually sister brands if you don't know initio and uh, apart from the marley i'm not sure if they're owned by the same people but yeah i think um, basically it's what i've just described it's a more gourmand version of oud for greatness focusing more on the praline notes a bit more on the sweeter notes less on the 
spices, less on the uh, heavy woodiness of Oud for Greatness. I don't actually get that, that much Oud from Haltane when I tried my sample. Maybe I, I was just not uh, experiencing it enough times, maybe I need to try it again. But I think it's an incredibly sexy fragrance. I think it kind of deviates from the usual style of Puff of the Money, actually, in my opinion. And uh, that's probably because it's actually an Initio fragrance. <laughs> maybe that's why. But uh, yeah, no, I, I do think it's a kind of different style to Puff of the Mario's usual stuff, but I think if you're a mature gentleman who wants a really nice cold weather evening scent, Haltane can do it for you. It is a really sexy fragrance. Definitely worth checking out. Next, boom, a bomb. No, spice bomb. Spice bomb infrared. Man, this is my new love. It's an absolutely amazing fragrance. I always have loved the extreme version, but this one is just so good. I love the added saffron. I love how it's also cinnamony and spicy. It's also got added red fruit. It is, I would say, more of a crowd-pleasing spice bomb. I think Spice Bomb Infrared, I completely agree with her. This is the oldest one I think she's holding. It is a fantastic release. They kind of took the original and kind of added this red fruity aspect to it. It kind of made it more modern, a bit more smooth, creamy, and powdery. If you want a great cooler weather signature you can probably wear most of the year round uh, apart from the summertime and I would say you know it's more of a casual sense if you want a casual signature this is great you've got compliments got decent performance around six to eight hours off the medium projection the other part from was a bit more intense heavy longer lasting but it's definitely more of an evening scent in my opinion probably less versatile after the unfortunate reformulation of Spice Bomb Extreme maybe actually Spice Bomb Infrared might be the best version of Spice Bomb out currently the top three are the ones that I have loved forever and still they haven't been moved from the list. So this just goes to show you how good they are because I just have a huge fragrance collection. Like I buy fragrances and test them all the time, but I am a creature of habit and I have got a certain taste and I stick to that, that taste if the fragrance is good enough. And this is my, I'd say in the last two years, I've discovered this by Redo de los Santos. It is for somebody who likes smelling a bit different, maybe somebody a bit creative, if you want a sexy creativity, that vibe, this is to die for. Okay, I've tried the, the by Rito Discovery, so I've tried a fair few of their fragrances. I don't think i tried De Los Santos, so I'm expecting Santo Palo, the woody note to be in here, which is quite a smoky, woody base note. So let's see the note breakdown. Okay, I was horribly wrong. We got prominent notes of sage, orris root, which is sort of like iris, a natural version of iris, musk, frankincense, or libanum. Interesting. So it's quite different to what I expected. I thought it would be a really super woody fragrance. The main accords at the top of that fragrantica page is musky aromatic amber. Dry sandalwood, Santal 33 style. So, okay, maybe there is that woody style I was expecting with some burnt wood type of notes, okay, and aromatic herbs. It's nice, smells like a bunch of dried herbs mixed together, love it. Maybe it's possible to find something similar because I feel like it's not a very rare scent. I've smelled it before. So, interesting, you know, a stop by reader price tag that has something that sounds like it's going to be quite polarizing. It has apparently not the best longevity according to Fragrantica. That's an unfortunate thing about by reader. Some of the fragrances can be hit or miss. And to me, this doesn't sound particularly sexy, uh, but I think for some individuals it will be. So I think this is definitely a polarizing scent you need to try before you buy. Now for the number two. It is Bleu de Chanel. And this year it's Parfum version. To me, the Parfum just, just made its way up the list for me. Smell the dry down. It's so good. It's so much better than the Eau de Parfum. The only thing is the Eau de Parfum projects a little bit more. I love that one as well. But if you want a more rounder, more expensive, rich version of the original, or maybe you've had the original, the Eau de Parfum forever, and you want something a bit different with a slight bit of difference, this is just killer. I wouldn't say that the Parfum is much better than the Eau de Parfum from Bleu de Chanel. Actually, I'd say the entire line is pretty similar across the different ranges, the different concentrations. But I do think the Parfum is the best Bleu de Chanel for the die-hard fan of Bleu de Chanel and the most mature gentleman who likes Bleu de Chanel. It has the best longevity, around 12 hours. Medium projection, I still think the projection is pretty good and it focuses more on sandalwood. Sandalwood is a note that I think is incredibly attractive but can be misleading because some noses don't detect it very well or as easily as others. So some people actually think the projection isn't there but actually sandalwood can be a very expansive, diffusive projecting note. So I do think Bleu de Chanel Parfum is sexy 
and I think it's for those diehard fans who really want to spend extra money on this DNA. Number one is a fragrance that I myself find extremely, extremely sexy and it is MFK Amorous Om Eau de Toilette. It's absolutely killer, especially in the spring summer. It just smells so good. The notes, I'll admit, on the website don't do this fragrance justice because it says that it's got coconut, milk chocolate, amorous, iris. It doesn't really smell like those notes, I would say. You have to really smell it to see whether you like it. This to me, it is a fresh, crisp, it's slightly sweet. It's got that sandalwood coconutiness, but like a light bit. It's a weird one because it's so extremely fresh and light, but it's got incredible power to it. Interesting. Amorous Porom Eau de Toilette, I think it smells sexy. I think it's incredible. It's an interesting signature, but I would not say this has power to it personally from my experience. I get like six hours longevity maybe with the medium projection, which is a little bit disappointing for the price tag that MFK usually asks. But I do think the notes kind of do it justice. I don't think there's much of a chocolate vibe here, but I do think this is a ambery amorous fragrance that has this powdery aspect from iris with a touch of coconut but it is fresh and crisp as she says i think there's bergamot in here can't remember but it is quite an interesting balance signature i would say you can wear this in the day and night for three out of four seasons maybe don't wear this in the winter time because i don't think it has that power i don't think it has that depth and uh, intensity to go through the winter cold there well enough but i do think this is a very elegant beautifully blended an interesting and distinct signature. I do think this is sexy, but try before you buy to see if the performance is something that is good enough for you. Yeah, the longevity on fragrance goes around moderate a lot of the times with some people saying long lasting, sillage is moderate. So again, try out the performance to see how it does on your skin. And that concludes this video, guys. Uh, thank you to Monica for creating this video. I'll leave a link into the original clip for you guys to watch at your own leisure in the description down below. What do you guys think of Monica's list? I think I pretty much agree with all of them. I haven't tried the Los Santos by Byredos. Maybe I'll try that at some point and see if I agree or disagree. Let us know your thoughts on Monica's list and what is the number one most sexy men's fragrance for you currently right now. Share your thoughts in the comments down below, guys. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to check out our previous reaction video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.